This is our last topic in, in rotation. We'll have another video, just kind of some examples, but right now we're going to talk about rotational kinetic energy. It's just a different type of kinetic energy. And the basic idea is that any time uh, an object spins at all, turns, rotates, rolls, whatever, it has energy associated with that. We're going to call it k-rotational, rotational kinetic energy. So any time an object is turning, spinning, moving in a circle, rolling, and we're concerned about spinning and rolling, we can say that it has a rotational kinetic energy. So, if regular kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, in rotation, instead of mass, we have uh, rotational inertia, and instead of velocity, we have angular velocity. So, Rotational kinetic energy is going to be one half i omega squared. That's it. We'll go through some examples, but really, that's it. Anytime an object spins, we just have to add in this extra bit of energy. So, um, it's just another kind, another form of energy that we have to deal with. So, as we look at the types of energy an object has, we can have potential, we can have kinetic. Our potential energies can be spring, um, spring potential energy or gravitational potential energy. And now our kinetic energies can be rotational kinetic energy or linear kinetic energy. Basically, all we're going to do is look for rolling. If it rolls, we're going to have to add rotational kinetic energy. So let's look at a quick example. So we have a ramp. It's 8 meters tall. We're going to put a sphere on that ramp. So a sphere of mass 4 kilograms, radius 1 meter. Rolls down, uh, I wrote that wrong. Rolls down an 8 meter hill without slipping. What is its speed? at the bottom. And we'll fix that. Eight meter hill at the bottom and what is its speed at the bottom? So, let's look at the top. The energy at the top is just potential energy. It's going to be mgh. And then once we get down to the bottom, my energy is going to be kinetic energy but it's also rolling, and it's rolling without slipping, so that gives me rotational kinetic energy. I have two types of kinetic energy at the bottom. Ball rolls, so it must have k-rotational in addition to linear kinetic energy. So our conservation of energy says the total energy at any two points is going to be the same. So the energy at the top is equal to the energy at the bottom, mgh is equal to one-half mv squared, that's our linear kinetic energy, plus one-half i omega squared, that's our rotational kinetic energy. So we're going to think, we're gonna have to plug some things in. So, because it's a sphere, we know something. And because we're rolling without slipping, we know something. Now the sphere part is just going to tell me my rotational inertia. i is two-fifths mr squared. The rolling without slipping part tells me that I can connect velocity to angular velocity, and that's how I'm going to do it. Omega equals V over R. So I'm going to make those two substitutions into this energy thing. So MGH is one-half MV squared plus one-half two-fifths MR squared plus V over R, and that whole quantity is squared. Now, the big thing that we're starting to see, and I hope you know, those are all things that cancel out. We can cancel out the R squares and the V over R because we're squaring that part. But what I want you to see is that beforehand we didn't have to share kinetic energies. It all went into linear energy and we went faster. Now some of it's going into rotational kinetic energy. So I'm going to have less linear kinetic energy, which means we can't go quite as fast. And we're going to look at how not as fast we're going. So we've crossed all that out. Let's rewrite it. MGH is one half MV squared. And we're left with one fifth MV squared. We can combine those, lowest common denominator is 10, 
we get MGH is 7 over 10 MV squared. M's cross out. So if we divide by that, 10 over 7 GH equals V squared. If we plug in our numbers, that velocity comes out to be about 10.69, we'll say 10.7 meters per second. That's how fast the ball is going at the bottom when it rolls. And just for comparison's sake, Let's just say there was no friction and there was no rotational kinetic energy. This thing just slid down the bottom. Didn't spin at all. Okay. In that case, your, your potential energy would be equal to your kinetic energy. The M's cross out. Uh, we have 2GH is equal to V squared. Plug in your numbers. That velocity comes out to be 12.65. So that difference in velocity is because more of our energy, uh, sorry, less of our energy goes into linear kinetic energy. Uh, and more of that energy is rotational kinetic energy. The velocity is smaller because some energy became rotational kinetic energy. We don't, we don't have as much energy going to the same place anymore. So, my total energy is now spread out between kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy, which means less is kinetic. We're not moving as fast in that straight line. Let's look at some other implications of this energy thing. Oh. So the energy has to be shared. That's why we're not going to go as fast. So let's say we have four different ramps. We put four different objects on these four different ramps. The first one, we're going to put a block on there that has no friction, so it slides straight down. On the second one, we're going to put a ring on there, and it rolls without slipping down. Third one, we're going to put a disc, a solid disc, also has no slipping. The fourth one, we're going to put a sphere, again, with no slipping. We're going to compare what happens when we release them all at the same time. I want to know who's going fastest at the bottom. So we'll look at what energy says uh, about, about the energy transformations going on here. So each object slides down the ramp. How do their speeds compare at the bottom? And so, for comparison's sake, let's say they all have the same mass. And let's say our round objects all have the same radius. And so we get energy for each one. So with the block, Total energy is the energy of the block. That's great. So MGH, sorry, total energy at the top is total energy at the bottom. At the top we have potential energy, at the bottom we have just kinetic energy. There's no rolling, there's no rotational kinetic energy. Boom. Since there is no friction, there's no rolling. and there's no rolling, all of that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Linear kinetic energy. What that means for us is that it's going the fastest at the bottom. It doesn't have to share its kinetic energy with any other kinds of energy. That's it. Fastest at the bottom. Awesome news. Now, Let's look at the ring. The ring, again, the energy at the top is equal to the energy at the bottom. We have potential energy at the top. And we have kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy at the bottom. And let's just plug in the moment of inertia so we can look at that. The moment of inertia here is just mr squared because it's a disk. All that mass is concentrated out at the end. Then let's look at the disk. Ring, sorry, it was all thing. Now let's look at a disc. Same idea, energy at the top becomes is the same as the energy at the bottom. At the top it's potential energy. 
the bottom it becomes kinetic and rotational kinetic energy. And again, we're going to plug in our moment of inertia. This time our moment of inertia is smaller. It's one half mR squared. What that does is make the kinetic rotational energy part smaller. So in this case I'm going to have less kinetic rotational energy, which means this object will have more linear kinetic energy. So it's going to be going faster than the ring. And then let's look at the sphere. Again, the energy at the top is equal to the energy at the bottom. And the bottom is going to be linear kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy. And we're going to plug in the moment of inertia for a sphere, 2 fifths mr squared. And looking at that, it's even smaller still. It has even less rotational kinetic energy because it has even less moment of inertia. So we see the smaller the moment of inertia gets, the less rotational kinetic energy we have. And the less rotational kinetic energy we have, the more linear kinetic energy we have. So the object with the largest rotational inertia has the largest rotational kinetic energy, meaning, oh, and then just to follow that, the more rotational kinetic energy an object has, the less linear kinetic energy it has, just like what we were talking about. So the velocity of the sphere here is greater than the velocity of the disk, and it's greater than the velocity of the ring. But all three of those have less linear kinetic energy than the block, because the block is not spinning at all, and it's not sharing any of its kinetic energy.